Ladies and gentlemen, I shall have much pleasure in reciting for you. I'll go and have a drink. Yes, and put a little poison in it while they're there. A short recitation entitled The Village Blacksmith. Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. He stands beneath the tree, diddly diddly dee. He doesn't lie down or sit. Certainly not. From she's laddie. The smith the mighty man is he with large and sinewy hands. Large hands? Big, fat, cockeyed, sloppy dukes. Just plain large hands. And the muscles of his brawny arms are as strong as iron bands. And the muscles of his brawny arms are as strong as German bands. What was he going to do with them? Do with what? An arm full of cockles, muscles, and willocks. Don't you know what muscles are? You can get them anywhere to find a quad. No, no. This is a muscle. The muscle of a man denotes strength. Oh, I perceive. Yes, and if I have much more of your impudence, I'll give you a practical illustration of the strength of my muscle. Or in other words, I'll punch your fat head. With your muscle? Yes, with me, no, with my fist. You will? Yes, I will. Then I'll accept your apology. Week in, week out, from morn to night, you can hear his fellows blow. He's broken winded. And see him swing his heavy sledge with measured beat and slow. He measured his beat? Yes. You didn't tell me he was a policeman? He's not a policeman. Oh. Like the sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low, and children coming home from school look in at the open door. He's hard at work. Yes. And a lot of kids come messing around his shop door. They peep in through the open door. And more darn fool of him not to shut it. They love to see the flaming forge and hear his bellows roar. Ha-ha! Ha-ha, shut up, and catch the burning sparks that fly. Who did? The little children. What for? In their childish glee. Why, just now you said they caught him in the hand, and now you say they caught him in their glee. Here, have I got a glee? Has he got a glee? Well, were the sparks burning? Of course they were burning. Then they must have burned their glee. And catch the burning sparks that fly like top from a threshing floor. Did you not laugh? What for? When they chopped him, he knocked them down and thrashed them on the floor. He did not knock them down. Then they must have been pushed. Yes, they were pu- They were not pushed. Listen to the last line. I think it's the most beautiful of all. Kiss me, Maggie. He looks the whole world in the face, for he owes not any man. Teach. Teach or I shall weep a lot of wet. Do not cry to that teach you pretty lines like those when you went to school. Pretty and those. I'd like to hear With them. With pleasure. Inside a pair of hobnail boots, the village beauty stands. A hairy ginger to the roots. She's toenails on her hands. Her eyes are full of eyesight, and her necktie's full of neck. Her necktie's full of neck. Now, I didn't interrupt you, did I? No, you didn't say a thing. Her ears are full of heroes. She's a credit to her sex. She doesn't catch the burning sparks. She doesn't burn her gleams. Her bloomers are ventilated just to catch the summer's breeze. Her ears are full of heroes, and her boots are full of socks. And the muscles of our brawny legs stand out like butcher's blocks. Get out of it, get out of it. 